All right, so for our next project, we're going to be working on an Impressionism um, piece. And we're going to start a little bit with a history behind the movement. And then we're going to work on the technique. I'm going to show you the technique and how it's done um, for the first five minutes, uh, ten minutes of next class. And then you can get started on your actual project. I, I just want you to listen to uh, this mini lecture um, about the movement and then we can get started on this tomorrow. So for a little bit of the history behind Impressionism, um, this movement started uh, during the mid to late 19th century. What I mean by that is that it started around the 1860s, kind of, sort of. Um, what you need to know is that art before then was judged very critically by the Academy. And what I mean by the Academy is the Academy of Fine Arts in Paris. If you wanted to be a famous artist, if you wanted to be a respected artist, uh, you had to exhibit and you had to be accepted by this academy and you had to paint by academic standards. When I'm talking about academic standards and the art before Impressionism and how everything was uh, revolutionized by this movement is that before this came to be, art was very somber, art was very formal, Art was very respectful. It was for rich people, for the aristocrats, for, it was not for the people. It was not for the regular people. It was not for the poor people. It was only for the, re the rich, by the rich, with rich subjects, with rich subject matter. What I mean by that is that most paintings were religious or political or historical or portraits of famous, um, of famous people, of important people, of rich people. It was never for the common people. So in 1863, Edward Manet, like you can see here, Edward Manet submitted this painting to the Salon. The Salon was where um, the Academy painters exhibited their work. And this painting was rejected by the Salon. He really didn't understand why he was using the colors that he was supposed to use. Um, he was using the technique that he was supposed to use, uh, but it still got rejected. It's not because of the nude body that you see in the image. It's because of the nude body in a contemporary setting with two clothed men. That was a big no-no at the time, of course, and that's why it got rejected. So he gets together with some other artists to complain about this fact that he's not getting accepted into the salon to exhibit his work. And they get to talking, and a lot of the artists are complaining, are wanting to rebel against the subject matter and the way that they're supposed to paint, and just a bunch of stuff that they get very frustrated with. So keep in mind that in the mid to late 19th century, this is right after World War I, and Napoleon III is the one uh, reigning over France at the time. So he agrees with these artists, and he wants to reconstruct the country and um, give new hope to people. So he... Um, talks to these artists, he agrees with them, and he creates another salon where all of the artists that get refused or rejected at the academy salon, 
they can present here, they can exhibit their works here. This salon is called Le Salon des Refusés, or the Salon of the Refused, and it's for the general public to judge. Most of the people invited, of course, are there to make fun of it because of these artists that are exhibiting at the Salon of the Refused. But it starts to draw attention to these artists and to new tendencies. And it's kind of like there's no such thing as bad publicity at this time. So it starts as a salon where everybody goes to make fun of the artists because they're refused. But it starts gaining more fame and more curiosity. And more people and more people and more people start to go to see these artists, to see these rebels, and to comment on these new art tendencies. Um, this starts getting so big that they put in a petition to Napoleon to open another salon in 1863 and another one in 1872. And both of the times they get rejected, another salon is not opened. So in 1873, Claude Monet, Renoir, Pissarro, and Sisley get organized and they talk among themselves and they think that if Napoleon is not going to give them another salon to present their work, they're going to do it on their own. And they create the Cooperative and Anonymous Association of Painters, Sculptors, and Engravers. And they opened their own exhibit on 1874. On this exhibit, 30 artists participated. Not including Manet, though. Edward Manet. But it did include Paul Cézanne, Berth Morisot, and Edgar Degas. At this exhibit, Louis Leroy, a famous art critic, attends and he mocks the whole exhibit and talks about how this is the exhibition of the Impressionists as a joke because he says that these paintings, this exhibit, are at best as sketched but not near being a finished piece. Some embrace the name some rejected it. The reason why Louis Leroy give them, gives them this name is because of this painting, Claude Monet's Sunrise, that he painted in 1872. After uh, the joke about uh, these artists being impressionism, Impressionists, he changes the name of this painting to Impression Sunrise because Louis Leroy just talked about how this is just an impression of a sunrise. It's not a real sunrise. It's a sketch or just an impression of what a sunrise should look like, not a finished piece. But like I said, some embraced the name, some rejected it. Some of the people who did embrace the name and actually started calling themselves impressionism, impressionists are Monet, Alfred Sisley, Berth Morisot and Camille Pissarro. They valued sunlight and color and painting with spontaneity. And they were happy about this, then that they started coming together as a group. Some of the artists that rejected the name were Edgar Degas, because he always just valued the primacy of drawing over color. And he actually didn't like drawing outside either, and this was big with the Impressionists. Uh, we're going to go over that in a minute. Uh, Auguste Renoir also rejected some of the ideas of Impressionism, and he turned his back on the group for a while, and he just never fully came back to it. And, of course, Edward Manet, he 
like we talked about at the beginning, he was the one that wanted to rebel against the Salon um, at the beginning. He's the one that kind of sort of got everybody together to open this other salon because he got rejected to the actual academy salon. But after a little while, he just wanted to go back to the original salon because um, he thought that that was the only way to really make it as an artist. And he tried to convince the other artists to just go back to the original salon to be accepted by the academy because he just wanted to do things that way because he thought that uh, exhibiting at the salon of the refused was never going to get him where he wanted to get um, <clears throat> some of the techniques that um, were seeing when we talk about Impressionism are the short, thick strokes of paint used to capture the essence of the subject, not the details, as you can see here. Uh, they don't value details over expression, over the essence, over light, over movement, okay? Um, they are more interested in applying color side by side with as little, uh, as little mixing as possible because the optical mixing of the colors occurs in the eye of the viewer when you see it from far away. Um, some paintings are meant to be seen from up close. Some are meant to be seen from far away. Um, most of these um, paintings are not very small paintings. Um, they also don't use uh, many grays or dark tones, and if they do, they're produced by mixing complementary colors. Usually black is completely avoided in these pieces. Um, as you can see, natural light is emphasized. Uh, reflection is emphasized. Cast shadows are emphasized because most of these are painted during the day, okay? As you can see, you don't see many details. You see more movement and lighting and shadows uh, and cast shadows. These are some examples of paintings done by the artists that we talked about. Okay, um, as you can see, the colors are unmixed. They're pure colors. The brush strokes are thick. They emphasize on light, cast shadows and reflections. Okay, not a lot of black is used. Very few details, okay. You don't see many um, scenes of um, anything done at night. So with um, these examples in mind, what we're going to do is create our own Impressionism painting, okay? The subject matter is going to be free. You're going to choose what you want to do, but it does need to represent what we were talking about, sunlight, a reflection. Um, everyday life, no details, and um, we'll see a little bit more about the technique tomorrow in class. Now what I want you to do to finish up is to go on your Moodle page for our um, class. You're going to go down and you're going to look for Impressionism.
and you're going to look for the video that I have posted there. It gives you a little bit more of um, a little bit more of the history of it. It talks a bit more in depth about uh, the um, the artists involved and a little bit more about the technique to clarify anything um, that you um, didn't understand or you're not clear on and we will talk about this tomorrow, okay?